Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. Uh, we invited Anthony Villioen back onto the show. He is the CEO at Afritin Mining. Uh, he talks through the rationale behind the raise of £13 million last night. Seems to be well received in the marketplace. Talks through what he's going to be uh, doing with that and how he's apportioning it across the different commodities that he's hunting in Namibia. So we're talking uh, tin uh, we're talking lithium and we're also talking tantalum. So um, lots of news there. We look to the future, see you know, where they insert themselves into the market and the scale of the opportunity. If you want our thoughts and opinions on the conversations, topics discussed, company and indeed Anthony, you can find that at cruxinvestor.com forward slash club. We can also find detailed company reports and analysis. We've got commentary from experts from around the world on a variety of companies and commodities. We've got training courses on there and we do summaries of all the interviews that we do just to save you some time because we know you're busy people. Uh, but most exciting We've got a wonderful, thriving community of investors sharing their thoughts and ideas with each other in a nice, friendly, safe, and intelligent environment, free from all that judgment, trolling, and abuse you see elsewhere. And if that sounds nice to you, and I hope it does, go and join them, cruxinvestor.com forward slash club. I would say there's a small waiting list at the moment as we've had a surge of applicants. We need to vet everyone, uh, but uh, sign up, cruxinvestor.com forward slash club. The wait isn't that long. And we'd love your feedback too. So give us a like, leave your thoughts below. And uh, if you want to see precisely what we talked about, do take a look in the description. Anthony, how are you, sir? Matt, very, very, very good on yourself. Look, it's been a while. It's been far too long. It was June last year. You've been uh, you've been avoiding me, and that, that, that's what it feels. Have you been busy? Yeah, yeah well, been been locked down, but uh, more importantly, been digging some very valuable holes in in Namibia and uh, and making money, which is which is obviously first and foremost and most uh, what most miners want to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, like, okay, that's that's good news. Um, and we can hear all about it in a second. But first of all, uh, why don't you kick us off with a one minute summary uh, overview of the business, then I'll pick it up with some questions from there. Okay. All right, great. So um, since June last year, Afriton has moved significantly on in terms of its ambitions and in terms of its, its strategy. We have moved swiftly into uh, steady state production on our existing plant. We have produced a bankable feasibility study for expanding the plant. And what we are on the cusp of uh, opening up is a significant new technology mineral province that will be, that we believe will be something for, for the future. Okay. You said to me last time tin was sexy. I, I didn't agree with you. Has it become sexy? It's, it's, it's become way sexier, Matt. It's, uh, you know, we've, I've been a tin bull for uh, for a better part of two decades. And, uh, you, you know, uh, we, we often spoke about a, a pinch point coming in the market. Uh, you know, a lot of the big guys had ex- have exited tin, uh, you know, 20 odd years ago, expiration has basically had basically dried up and uh, you know then all of a sudden you had this 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 pushing demand from your semiconductor market uh, that everybody thought would 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 basically go into a bear market but has actually turned around and gone into a bull market uh, you know semiconductors are used in all of your uh, chips that go into all all electronic equipment and importantly into electric vehicles so You've just had this confluence of factors that has uh, sent the tin price in, into into the stratosphere, and uh, yeah, we we we've, uh, we want to make 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 tin sexy again. Okay, I look forward to. It. So let's talk about that because um, I think you know the the COVID situation has sort of driven um, a, you know a big new agenda around EV and even like semiconductors. Um, but people have been distracted by other things during that period. You know, precious metals have seen have been. You've seen, you know, you know, copper and nickel do quite well. But tin's not known. So give us a give us some background here on on the size of the market, um, and you know what you think you, your contribution could be given the scale of your or potential scale of your operation. Perfect. Yeah. Look. So, I mean, you talk about copper, and every, obviously everybody knows about copper. But um, you know, tin is. Uh, is basically the glue that that gets that sticks all the copper together, you know, and and so it's got very similar applications uh, in the in the electronic space, uh, specifically as I said with with regards to microchips. I mean, all of your electronic equipment is is driven by microchips, and and the the sole element in terms of uh, putting the or in, in terms of manufacturing those uh, microchips is is all is all tin. And uh, the market of the semiconductors uh, is is largely driven by um, by uh, consumer demand, and uh, you know the fact that we that we all now communicate through screens that has has 
been an unprecedented time in the tin market, driving driving demand for the for these electronic goods and also the advent of, of electric vehicles. So, you know, from a market uh, that produces uh, globally about 350,000 uh, tons of tin a year, you know, we, we're expecting that to increase substantially in the near future. And, uh, you know, from the from a supply side, there's there's just not enough new deposits coming on stream, and uh, you know, and especially deposits in in uh, conflict free areas, and and that's that's where our competitive advantage lies. Right. Okay. Let's look at some of the moving parts here, if you don't mind, Stu. First of all, you raised some money last night, about thirteen million pounds. Uh, so why? So look, I mean, we we've reached a we reached a quite a significant milestone uh, in the company. You know, we we got into production and steady state production in December, uh, in December uh, last year. Um, so things have things have been growing at, at quite a rapid rate. Uh, but you know what we've also you know declared recently, uh, or, or as part of our existing resource, was a significant lithium deposit or inferred lithium resource. As well as as well as obviously the the, the, the tantalum and uh, you know what what we've seen you know the the the, the whole extraction process of uh, of um, tin it's 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 not so much chemical it's a lot more to do with uh, flow dynamics it's all about uh, gravity based separation and uh, you know we've got a very interesting mineralogy in that in that we we uh, that our Cassiterite crystals, where, where that that the tin is uh, occurs in, are very coarse, and we're getting really good liberation. So, so it's the, the whole uh, sort of backbone of the plant is is all about ensuring that uh, that 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 the, that the uh, material moves through the plant as efficiently as possible. So, obviously, with that, you do get bottlenecks. We do get areas where you where you believe you can improve. So uh, we said about um, seeing how we how we can expand that. Uh, we've we've completed a bankable feasibility study. We're undertaking a, a very very intense uh, uh, mineral mineralogical and metallurgical program to extract the the, the different byproduct streams. So you know, uh, with where we are now, tin, our, our, the tin prices at all time highs. Our share prices is gone up close on three hundred percent this year. So. You know, we we thought it uh, an opportune time to bring in some more some more cash and uh, you know really hit the expansion and growth of our company quite quite aggressively this uh, the, this year and the coming years uh, from that. Okay, let me just try and understand it because you cover a lot of ground there. It was your thirteen million pounds is going to be used to optimize the uh, the plant. Is that that's right in terms of not yeah. just your tin production, but Lithium extraction components—is is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, yeah. So, so look, uh, you know, it's it's, it's expanding the, the 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 current facility and expediting that. Right. I mean, at, at the at, it, from the results from the bankable feasibility. Well, to give me some of the numbers on the BFS because I need to understand why you feel that accelerating it now is is the right time. What did it tell well, you? Look, the, the key critical thing is that uh, you know we came up with a capex number, a very modest capex number of of around five million pounds. Uh, and the, you know, by implementing that now at these prices, that's got a one a less than a one year payback period, and increases our production by seventy percent. So, you know, there's there's obviously significant uh, benefits to to be had from that. Right. So that's five million. Got it. Yeah. The rest of it. The rest of it, uh, as I said, lithium a lithium test work and and bringing the the lithium stream uh, on online. Uh, you know, that's Currently, we we literally throwing away all of our lithium onto the dumps, um, you know. So so it's, it's a how do we capture that? We've got a good idea of what the plant and the flow sheet will look like, but uh, you know you have to go through the the various steps in terms of uh, getting the getting that up to a point where you can add that that lithium module on. But I mean, from all, from what we've seen, it should be a relatively straightforward process. But you got to you got to do the hard yards. And then also, you know, we, we've got a huge, huge area there. So, you know, our existing resource, uh, you know, we've confirmed a, a resource and converted that into a reserve. Uh, but we've got a whole lot of uh, historic information over the mining area. So to, to get to this point in terms of declaring that resource, we confirmed 100 holes and there are 100 historic holes and there's still another 600 holes 
still left to go. So lots of exploration upside, bringing all of that uh, into modern JORC sort of compliance. And then, uh, and then you know, we, we're in a, a new technology province and uh, that's something I want to, I want to talk about uh, in, in a bit more detail. Okay, we can talk about it in a bit more detail. I'm trying to get the order of play here with the cash that you've gone on race. So five million pounds, I get it. Um, when you're talking about the lithium component, when you say you've got a good idea of what the flow sheet looks like, that means you're not quite there on the economics yet or the recover, recoverable components. I mean, what, what do you know? What do you not know? So it's it's quite an it's quite an interesting thing. So you know we, as I said, it's it's a gravity based circuit that we use. So so our our main sort of sort of driver of the circuit is is our, our first stage dense media separator. So we've we, you know uh, the, the material comes out a four stage crushing uh, circuit and then goes into the dense media separator. So it's, it, obviously your dense media is added to that and then. Uh, separates all of the, the heavier material, which is typically your tin and your tantalum, and that that we call those the sinks. That then goes across, goes into uh, the rest of the concentrating circuit, and then all the lighter material, uh, especially the feldspars, goes out uh, uh, onto onto the waste dump. And in that lighter material, uh, in the in those feldspars, is is your lithium your Li two O component. Okay, so. So what 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 we need to do is then capture that lighter component. So what we're looking at is putting another dense media circuit on, and rather than extracting the heavier material, we'll extract the lighter material, float that off, and we'll be producing a concentrate that we can sell on the global market. Right. I understand the theory of it. Okay. What I'm what I'm yeah. asking you is around the economics of it. What do you know today? So because it comes back to why raise the money today? Is it a case of take it while you can because the market's offering it because it was oversubscribed or yeah. and, and have yourself set up ready to go on, on the lithium thing because you're quite close or there's a bunch of work to do to understand the economics, but we think currently it, it should be okay. I mean, wh wh where are you in that mix? Uh, uh, options, uh, option C. Uh, C. So, okay, fair uh, enough. You, you're uh, on your way. But, but then that leads to the question, which is how much yeah. more money will you need to raise to be able to liberate that value? Or are you good? Uh, look, we're good. Uh, we, we, you know, the, we, we had, we've had great support from our existing shareholders and from new institutions coming in. So, you know, this, this sets us up really. Uh, you, you know, when when we present to the our strategy to the board of directors, we had three different horizons. Horizon one is is done and dusted. Horizon two is expansion and growth, and uh, this this will set us up nicely for that expansion and growth phase. Right. Okay. So you recapital raising, you're good for a while because you can you've got a less than a one year return on the tin component by optimizing the plant and making it more yeah. efficient. You think yeah. that you can get some kind of financial contribution from the lithium, but you'll be able to confirm that this year? Yeah, uh, well, I hope so. Uh, the, the, our, our only unknown at this stage, and I, I know that a lot, a lot of uh, private investors do get frustrated with the, with the speed, is that uh, is because of these unprecedented times in the, in the minerals market, all the labs are, are jam-packed. So to get your assays through the labs is 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 a bit of a, a lottery at this stage, but we are working with the guys to, to turn that around a, a lot quicker. Right. And what else has the BFS told you? I mean, obviously there are BFSs and there are BFSs, so you've, it's allowed you to raise some capital, which is great. But in terms of, and there's a bit of optimization here, you've mentioned expiration component in the mix here in terms of adding future value. Because look, you're a 55 million pound company. It's not big yet. You've talked about the size and scale of the market. You've said there's not a lot of competition, a lot of players come out of the marketplace, yet there's this huge demand which supply is not going to be able to meet. How do you go from 55 million to something meaningful with the capital you've got now? So look, a, a, a large part of that, as I said, is 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 on the, the existing uh, area. Uh, you know, bringing that, uh, that level of confidence on the lithium side from an inferred through to a measured resource, uh, you know there was there was no historic information on the lithium back then because there was no was no use for it. But uh, you know, obviously, where we are now, it's, it's it opens up a whole new area for us. And uh, you know, if, if you look at the actual uh, producers of, of lithium, you, we ran this exercise recently, and 
I mean, you know, despite all of the exploration companies out there, there's probably only about three hard rock lithium producers in the world. And if we can get that module right, we could be the fourth, uh, you know. So, so it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really uh, lofty uh, goal that we want to set ourselves for, uh, this year is, is getting that stream up and running and, you know, being, being up there with, with one of the only lithium producers in the world. But but here's the bit that's going to you're a tin company, right? You've got this lithium yep. byproduct, but you, you're suggesting that the contribution t- from it could be significant. It, it could really be meaningful. And lithium's had a real bump in the last four or five months in terms of the equities out there. So it's good to be talking about it, but you still haven't understood or you haven't told me that you, you understand the economics yet. So what's your expectation of the well, scale of what you can achieve? So the, the broad strokes is is basically we'll be producing the tin for free. So the, the 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 lithium credits will 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 more than cover the the the, the, the tin production basically. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and and look, it's it's important to emphasise that. So there, you know there are other deposits similar in nature uh, in, in Australia um, that that. That produce these uh, sort, sort of polymetallic uh, deposits, and uh, you, you know one of those is one of the biggest uh, lithium producers in the world currently. So you know it's, it's not like we are reinventing the uh, the wheel, so as to speak. Uh, you know it's, it's a fairly fairly well understood uh, process, uh, but we just need to make sure that we we obviously it, it works well with our all. So tell me, tell me this, Anthony. You know, you're you're mining in a sort of you know well-known sort of historic district here. Namibia itself um, has got some quite interesting geology. So, I mean, do you see any other potential over and above what you're looking at at the moment? Yes, Matt. In, in fact, uh, you know, we've we've been talking about this in the office in the office quite extensively. So. You know, we talk about uh, known geological mineral provinces. You know, you've got the, the Pilbara uh, in, in Australia that's obviously uh, very rich in iron ore. You've got the Bushveld complex in uh, South Africa, which is just a very unique geological for, uh, uh, repository for PGMs, for vanadium, uh, chrome, you know, uh, and you've got the copper belt in, in Zambia that's, that's really rich in... Uh, Copper, obviously, and, and just a unique geological phenomenon. Where we are in Namibia, you've got these pegmatite belts that are just that run for hundreds of kilometers, and those pegmatite belts are intruded by a number of different elements. And it just so happens that all the elements that that these uh, pegmatite belts are intruded by are all your new technology uh, minerals. So you know, tin, tantalum, lithium. And we believe that that what we are opening up is the genesis of a whole new new technology province that can be compared to some of the the bigger mineral provinces on the planet. Meaning what? What are you going after? We well, we we want to be at the forefront of developing new technology minerals and mining new technology minerals for of, uh, to 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 sell to the world, basically. But when we say new technology minerals, what is that? Define what that is. So basically, all, all the minerals that are used uh, in driving uh, all, all of the, the technology that, that's coming into the world at the moment. So, you know, like your electric vehicles, your solar, uh, you, you know, ele- um, uh, new uh, applications on your electronics. Uh, so everything that, 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 that's driving the green, the green economy uh, and, and, you know, transforming the world from a, a, a co- hydrocarbon economy into a green economy and, and you know, the, being at the forefront of being able to open up mines that can provide that, 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 that those elements to that economy gives us a, gives us a great competitive advantage. And the fact that we're already producing uh, these elements, uh, you know, obviously enhances the, the product offering that we're giving to the market. You're trying to re-rate yourself as a critical minerals company next, right? Well, I don't, don't, I don't want to. Maybe it's, maybe we call ourselves Afri Tech Mining. There you go. I knew it was coming. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay, that, that gets really interesting. So again, let's just ask the question. So when do you put yourself in a position where you can confirm to the market what the economics are? What, what are you working to? Uh, well, in, in the next six to eight months, 
uh, and I don't like putting timelines because there are a few things that are out of my control, but you know, that, that, that is the target we've set ourselves internally. Okay. How are your finances now? You've raised some money. Have you got some loan notes outstanding? We've got some loan notes, but uh, we do want to uh, we do want to retire those now. We, you know, there is no more. There's no longer need for those, uh, and and we're making money, Matt. Uh, you know, how many junior mining companies do you know that start uh, getting cash flows in the first three years? That's that's exciting. You know, and every month, uh, you know, your cash inflow gets higher because the price gets higher. So you're, it's a, you're, it's a, you're producing money when you pay, when you pay down your your loan notes. You're making money. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, we'll, we'll do that quickly. Don't worry. Okay. Well, so that will happen out of the money that you just raised, is a portion? Because it's not. I mean, the loan notes aren't significant, are they? I mean, what are we talking about? A couple of million. Uh, uh, yeah, a couple of million. Uh, we, uh, you know that they uh, they've served their purpose, and it's, it's time to retire them. Clean up. You know, but part of this was cleaning up the balance sheet, getting our powder dry, getting ready for the next phase of, of expansion and growth. That's that's what it's all about. Okay. How are you selling product into the market? I'm talking about the tin. Obviously, yeah. So, so it's it's uh, we're selling to one of the big tin smelters, uh, Thai Sarko. They're based in Thailand. Uh, they're owned by the uh, AMC Group. In it's a, a trading company out of, out of based out of London. We've got a great relationship with them. They've extended our offtake agreement to to three years. Uh, we 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 getting good. Uh, you know that they as part of that that, that will, we also get uh, payment of. Uh, Part payment earlier on in the process, so it's a great relationship and something that something that we want to uh, build on. And you know, because of where we are geographically, which is very important, because a lot of tin deposits tend to be in very difficult areas. Uh, you know, uh, uh, getting a ton of tin from Mine Gate all the way to uh, Smelter is only one hundred fifty dollars a ton, if you can believe that. Uh, so, so that you know, that gives us a real competitive advantage in that space. Okay, and you're happy with that arrangement going forward? I know they've extended the offtake, but do you, how do you start taking control of the margins that you make by giving yourself optionality? Look, the the the, the, the things that 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 we can control uh, is, is is our costs. Uh, you know, it's it's a, a ma- managing our, our costs. Uh, you know. The, the macro thing, the macro elements of, of the business, you know, uh, pricing and what have you, is is always out of our control. But what what I, the thing that the thing that I can control is uh, producing a ton of tin cheaper than the next guy. And that's 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 the focus of this company. Okay, but, but you know, I mean, you can also control the other the other end in terms of what you sell it for, the margins, you know, because there are people involved in that chain now who are going to be capturing some of that. That. Yeah, yeah. Look, look I, I mean, it, the fact that we're selling to the directly to the um, to to the, the smelter and, and not going through sort of a, a, a trading company or or things like that, you know, it's there's there there are a few elements that 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 we can enhance. But I mean, you know, as I said, at one hundred fifty dollars a ton, it's it's a it's pretty. Uh, you, you, you'll struggle to shave a little bit more of that. It's it's at, at rock bottom prices. Okay, so let's let's come back to the money you are generating. Okay, you, how much cash are you producing, or how much cash will you produce once you've optimized it with this five million bo- uh, pounds? So basically, at the at this stage, we we we're producing about one point three million US dollars a month, uh, and uh, and that will increase by seventy percent. Uh, so uh, when we when we implement phase two, uh, you know, so uh, the, with with not a big incremental increase in your opex costs, uh, we we haven't reached the base of our of our opex yet. Uh, you know, obviously there's still a few uh, on this on this plant. Uh, there's there's a few elements that 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 we obviously need to get get better efficiencies on. So so we are still optimizing some of those things, but still coming in at a very competitive cost of around nineteen thousand dollars a ton. And uh, we want to drop that to about seventy thousand dollars a ton on a ton only basis. Right. Okay. So, in, in terms of your ambitions, you, you obviously want to be, you know, a meaningful supplier into the market. So you you plant you're kind of plant constrained in in a way yeah. if you want to be able to do that. So what do you do about that? So that's that's where phase two comes in. Uh, you know the. the the whole thing about this this deposit is is its, its sheer size. Uh, you know, uh, 
the the old timers mind over and I, I think I've run this through with you before, but you know that that they mind over twelve different pits, um, and just the pit that we're in places our tin inventory is, is one of and lithium inventory is one of the the biggest uh, open pit uh, tin mines in the world. We've still got to get those other six hundred holes drilled, so we're going to add all of that resource in. I mean the the uh, it's called back then had a eight year mine life, so. I mean, we could just we're just in the existing footprint, we could have a, a hundred year mine life, uh, and then you know, within our mining license area, we've still got another 180 outcropping pegmatites with visible tin mineralization. So, you know, like it's it's hard to comprehend. It's that you know this is this this is going to be solid producing baseload tin supply for literally the next hundred years. No, which is great. And when we hear that from companies, you know, lithium companies or uranium companies, it's, it's fantastic. But you've got to work out how you insert yourself into the current, uh, you, you know, um, ecosystem, right? You, you, what you can't do is damage margins by, effect, you know, dumping so much product into market effects pricing. So what are your ambitions yeah. there? And, you know, what, what do you think those numbers, steady state numbers are? Because I get phase one steady state. What, what's phase two or phase three look like? So, so look, the fa phase two is is a much up upscale plant, uh, and you know, literally, we, we can go as big as as big as we, we want to, and because obviously you've, you've got such a big open cost deposit, uh, you know, we benefit a lot more from economies of scale. Uh, just a quick one, you know, sixty percent or, or, or more of, of the of the global tin mines are, are underground mines, and some of them in, in very difficult areas. The, the, the balance tends to be kind of artisanal driven or, or what have you. And only 6% of the world's tin is actually produced on an open cost level. And so, so what we want to do is obviously increase the amount of open cost uh, tin going, going to the market. And, you know, the, the fact is where we are fundamentally in the, in the tin market is that it's been running at a deficit for a number of years. Uh, you know, we won't be able to, to to make a dent in that, even even if you even uh, other new uh, new mines it will take a while to 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 dent to to make a dent in that market. And you know, as I said, I've been I've been hunting tin tin deposits for the last 15, 20 years now, and it's very hard to find a, a, a big tin deposit. Um, you know that 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 you can turn into an industrial scale mine, and and I think that's lost on a lot of people. Yeah, it, it is. I, I guess when, where I'm trying to trying to get to, you say, oh, we won't be able to make a dent in the marketplace, but we've got a massive resource you can scale it up as you want. But you know, if I listen to um, CEOs of other commodities, like you know, you know, talks about graphite, and they say, well, we can we can absolutely supply you know half the world's needs or all the world's needs, but we'll be up against the Chinese. So that would be a really stupid thing to do because they would you know, crush us on price. Um, we can say the same with pot, potash or, or fertilizer markets where it's like there are a handful of players who again control the market and you, you, you need and, and with lithium the same or whatever. You've got to work out where you sit. You, you've been a tin bull for 15, 20 years, brilliant, but they're gonna be existing players who are going to be either concerned about what you're planning to do, make your life difficult, or yeah. you play along and say, well, actually, this is how we're going to, you know, insert ourselves into this ecosystem. So just wondering yeah. where, where, what that level is. Yeah. So, so that level uh, is, is the five to 10,000 tons per annum. And that's, and so that's, that's what we target. Uh, and as I said, you know, 10,000 tons puts us as about 3% of the world's supply. Uh, so, so you know, that's kind of the magic number that that, we, that we're working towards, um, and it's it, everything's geared towards that in phase two. Perfect. Okay, so that's really really good to understand because you do have an audience, and you've got a lot of happy shareholders this morning. You're very pleased about this fundraise, but there's also yeah. a few people in there who are, you know, to you know, we're off to the moon. I just wanted yeah. that level of realism and say, well, that's you know, this is good and more than good enough in terms of where we yeah. sit in the marketplace. Okay, brilliant, perfect. Um, so let's let's talk about um, the next six eight months. What are the things that we're looking out for? What are the numbers that we're looking out for? So, so look, uh, uh, you, you know, I think a, a, a watershed will will come in our our financials. Obviously, they're going to be, look very different from the last three years. So. Uh, that, that's going to be quite interesting. The the, the lithium 
with the lithium uh, numbers coming out of the test work is is going to uh, you know is, is going to be a, a sort of differentiator for us in the market. Uh, the, the increased uh, the, the ramp up in production and the speed with which we can get that production up and running, uh, you know, that's that's going to be key. Uh, you know, we've we've got some pretty interesting uh, exploration co- coming through. Not only, as I said, on the existing sites, we've got some some uh, other other licenses that, that that have all got very very good potential. So you know, there were a number of historic mines in the area, and we've got we've got a lot of those now. So. <clears throat> You know, it's about recreating that that model on the, uh, that we've done on, in, in Uis on on other on, on other aspects. Uh, so, look, there's, there's going to be a lot of news coming through this 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 year, and uh, it's, it's it's an exciting time. It is an exciting time, and okay. just to, just so you understand your priorities. So, um, we haven't talked about Tantalum much. Um, yeah. That's parked up for now. No, no. Uh, so, so look, the the Tantalum basically. Uh, and, and you know, just to explain the, 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 the slight issue we've had on the tantalum is that uh, the tantalum is more magnetic than the tin, so it, it goes through the same concentrating process. But the tin and the tantalum crystals are, are called it intergrown. So we were where we were just expecting to put it over a magnetic separator. There's a slight, slight iron content in the in the in the tin that makes some of or in some of the tin that makes it magnetic. So we we just need to uh, leach that away essentially, and then and then run it over the magnetic separator. So just uh, tweak, tweaking that that a little bit, and so so that, uh, but that will also hopefully come on stream in the in the not too distant future. Not a big add on, not a big capex, not a big cost. It's just get you know getting those those, those little tweaks right. Okay, beautiful. Well, that's a, that's a nice overview of what you've been up to since. We spoke, and you know your, your your take on what the rest of this year holds. So, now appreciate the catch up. Stay in touch. Um, you know, we'd love to hear how you're getting along with some of these initiatives, and you know how you the success of deploying this capital and, and what that could mean. So, we'll um, appreciate the call today. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Uh, so, just just to remind shareholders and uh, potential investors, we are on the cusp of a, of growing a significant mining company in a very unique space. We've built a team uh, that's that's capable of executing large-scale projects, and we we want to use that team now to expand the expand the company and grow us and grow our offering to the market. We're pretty excited about the new phase of development, and uh, we've got all hands on deck, ready ready to get to work on this.